Welcome back to another episode of How To TTRPG, the series where we talk about some of the maybe lesser known tabletops. We go through how to create a character, give a little bit of rules overview so that when you're done with the video, you can sit down at a table and start playing. In this episode, we're talking about Amazing Tales, a tabletop designed for children four and up. That just means that the rules are laid out in such a way that anyone, regardless of their experience, can jump in and have a good time. As mentioned, Amazing Tales is designed for children ages four and up, and it can be fun for the whole family to engage as your next family game night. The whole system is designed to be story-focused, where the emphasis is more on interaction and roleplay and not so much on contest. Now, that being said, when you do have contests, the rules to resolve them are exceptionally simple. Like, literally rolling one die. That allows for typically more creativity from the players and the storyteller. It allows for people to really dive deeper into what they want to do and less on what the mechanics allow them to do. Collaborative from a sense that everyone is telling their story which funnels up into the main overarching story without getting bogged down. The system is inherently low prep and the books even tell you not to prep too much. Allow things to be open so that they can happen organically so that the story grows and that the interactions happen in a certain way. The system is designed for short tales, and what that means is that it's just designed for game sessions that last maybe up to an hour. Now, if everybody at the table is into it and everybody's having a great time, you can absolutely go longer than that. Makes for a perfect rainy Saturday afternoon type game. And I would recommend playing this with no more than six heroes, even though the game is simple that's a lot of people talking over each other and trying to share everything without that downtime within a session that something bigger like D&D would allow. Up on the screen currently is a character sheet and as we build this character what a storyteller would typically do is they'd sit down with their player or players and start asking them what kind of character they want to make. For this, we're making Professor Slimezoid, who is a professor and a spy for whatever reason. Uh, you ask what the character's four main strengths are, and you've got those listed on this sheet in a D12, a D10, a D8, and a D6. And when we talk about mechanics, we'll get into what that means and what to do if you don't have those types of dice. So for this character, this character is a spy, so naturally they're going to be good at spying. It's a slime, so I figure they'll be good at shifting. Uh, because it is a spy, we want them to be good at sneaking, and we want them to be decent at fighting. So let's come up with a quick description for Professor Slimezoid. Uh, let's say that he usually has eight globby feet, uh, that he's a short green slime, he loves monocles and top hats, and he can change shape but not color, meaning that no matter what shape he turns into, he'll always be green. And that, you know, that plays into our spying and our shifting, you know, how good did we shift into our sneaking. Um, we don't really need a description for fighting, but if we wanted, we could throw in something like he carries a short sword, or if we don't want it to be in a fantasy, he carries uh, a PP7, right, or a golden gun if you want to go the James Bond route. And there we have our Professor Slimezoid, and let's, uh, let's get a quick idea of what he looks like. Aww, oh, isn't he cute? Look at him. Super cute. The setting of Amazing Tales can happen anywhere. A deep dark forest, magical kingdoms, pirate seas, adventures among the stars. It's up to whatever setting you and the players want to tell a story in. If you want to tell a story of space pirates that crash land in the Caribbean circa 1745, 
that's fine. Collaborate with the players on what type of story you want to tell, and you set a seed. Regarding dice, the recommended dice for the game is to have 1d12, 1d10, 1d8, and 1d6, as we talked about during character creation. If, however, all you have are d6s, there are variants that you can use. You can use a d6 for everything, with that difficulty still being 3. You could change that to be a 2. You could have a stronger skill be 2d6 and everything else be 1d6. As long as everyone's on board with the dice that are being used, there is no wrong answer. In Amazing Tales, there are no set spells, there are no set rules for magic. Just like everything else, it's a single die roll based on that skill. So it's recommended to ask the players what the magic looks like and what the intended effect is. They want something to float in the air, they want to turn somebody into a frog, they want to cast a massive fireball, they want to be like Sephiroth and bring Meteor down from the sky. Let them be imaginative with it. Let them run wild with it. As the storyteller, you can always balance it later. Now, in a system like that, where the magic is up to the imagination of the player and or the storyteller, it can feel overpowered, like they just use magic at every turn to solve the problems. As a friend of mine likes to say, it's Megazord all the time. You can throw other complications in there. So if they're trying to grab a necklace, maybe the necklace is too far away and their magic can't reach. Or there's some other complication that prevents what they wanted from succeeding in the exact way that they wanted it to. Everything in Amazing Tales is handled with a single die roll, including combat. So what you can do to make combat more engaging is the storyteller and the players describe the combat up until a point that a contest is actually needed. Until that role that determines whether they defeat that bad guy, or that bad guy defeats them, or maybe that bad guy gets the upper hand, or they run away, however that plays out. Not every conflict in Amazing Tales is going to be magic or combat focused either. You can have engaging creative puzzles and riddles or mysteries to solve. As the players become more and more invested in the story and the collaborative storytelling, you can add more perilous encounters. Maybe it's an archery contest or a vehicle race. Maybe there are natural hazards like a forest fire or a river that they have to figure out how to traverse. Rogue's Closing Thoughts this how-to was rather short. It's not a complicated system. Single die roll, difficulty of three, you can use d6s, and there's a lot of room for imagination. Just because it's designed for people four and up doesn't mean that an older audience won't have a lot of fun with it. Highly recommended for beginners and veterans of all ages. It's a fun little imaginative tale. An amazing tale, if you will. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and please leave a comment for anything that you want to see. There's a link down below in the description for the book on DriveThruRPG. Thanks again.